Good evening and welcome to the Versailles Church of Christ. Thank you for joining me this Wednesday evening, May the 5th, uh, for a time of Bible study. I hope you're having a wonderful week. hope you're, uh, you're busy, you're, you're, you're doing well in your lives, where, wherever you're at and whatever you're doing. I uh, hope you're, you're staying dry. You know, we've had a, a, few, uh, a few wet days here in the bluegrass, but hopefully we'll get some sunshine towards the end of the week. And something's blinking on my computer. With that, because I don't want that to mess up. All right, sorry about that. Um, hopefully, we'll get some dry weather for Mother's Day coming up, and I hope you have remembered your Mother's Day cards, your flowers, your coffee cups, whatever it is that you do for your moms uh, to celebrate their day. Uh, I know it's a it's a joyful time for some. It's a more challenging time for others because uh, your mother may have already passed on from this world, or her health is not doing well. But we do want to celebrate mothers, so I hope that you are able to do that in some way. Remember that we are meeting at the building at 7 p.m. We'll be meeting tonight at 7 p.m. here uh, in about 15 minutes. And so I hope uh, that you have uh, maybe are making plans to start coming to be with us on Wednesday evening. We'd love to have you. We we do still have social distancing guidelines in place. So, you know, everybody's wearing masks and trying to sit apart a little bit. But we are coming to the building uh, on, on Wednesday evening and on Sunday morning for Bible class at 930 and then evening worship at 5 o'clock. We are back to our regular times and uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we are moving closer and closer to that day to where we don't need masks or social distancing guidelines in place. And I look forward to that day. Let's remember everybody on our prayer list. We have a lot of people that we need to be praying for, to be mindful of, as some people that, have, that are dealing with cancer, some people that have other illnesses, that, that have struggles, that, that just are needing our prayers. So please remember everybody on our prayer list. If you are a visitor that, and you're with us tonight, thank you for being with us. I hope that this Bible study will bless you in some way. We would love to have you be with us at the building uh, hopefully one day you will. Sorry, I keep moving back and forth because I got that reflection in my glasses and that just, uh, well, it drives me bonkers. And so, you know, you think I've learned just to wear contacts and when I'm recording videos, but, you know, what do you do? But if you're visiting with us, hey, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being a blessing to me by your presence. Uh, come visit us. Uh, visit our website, vcfc.org. You can find more information about us as well as a contact us link where you can reach out to us, let us know that you were, that you were with us through our YouTube stream. Uh, maybe you have a Bible question. Maybe you have a prayer request. We would love to pray with you. We would love to, to, to interact with you in some way. So please reach out to us uh, through that avenue. And I don't know if you've noticed, but we are up to 98 subscribers uh, with our YouTube channel. And that's, that's awesome, man. It's took a while, but we're two away. And so... Uh, uh, I can't wait for me to get on one day and see that we hit those double, double digits or triple digits, I guess. But for everybody that has signed up to be a subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate your involvement in this. Uh, with all our videos as well, hey, hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate those comments and those thumbs up. So, uh, all right, all that out of the way, let's get to our study tonight. We are going to focus on uh, a psalm that, that many would say is maybe the greatest psalm in all of the Psalter. And tonight we are going to focus on Psalm number 19. So if you have your Bibles and you want to read along with me, we are going to go and read Psalm 119, and then we'll talk about it a little bit, okay? Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them He has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and, like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. 
The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. And the rules of the Lord are true and righteous together. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. And then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This psalm is the epitome of Hebrew poetry. Uh, C.S. Lewis said of Psalm 19, I take this to be the greatest psalm in all of the Psalter and one of the greatest lyrics in the world. Psalm 19 is what we would know as a wisdom psalm, and it's composed of three parts. You have a psalm of praise in the first six verses that, uh, you know, is the psalm as he's praising God for creation because through creation God is revealed. The second component is uh, the psalmist speaking about the immeasurable value to the law. And then a third component is the human component, the human need for prayer, for deliverance by God's holy hand all work together to create a thought, a concept that is worthy for us to to read and to meditate on and and to grasp and and to let it dwell in our heart. Uh, The words of Psalm 19 should touch us. You know, the psalmist at the end, all he can say is, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And that's what we all should say as we think about uh, all that is said throughout Psalm 19. So again, uh, the first six verses, the psalmist is speaking about creation. Uh, he's speaking about creation and he is uh, talking about the revelation that creation gives us concerning God. So you think about the first four verses. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech. Night to night reveals knowledge. Yet there is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard. But Their voice goes throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. What is the psalmist saying? That creation itself manifests the Creator. The heavens, he says, the heavens do what the congregation of God's people do every Lord's Day. Proclaim praises to God. I mean, what do we do on Sunday? We spend our time together in prayer and song, acknowledging the greatness of God, His glory, His will, his, his purpose for us, Him in action in our lives. We glorify Him with our songs and our prayers, uh, with our hearts and our minds and our words. And guess what? The heavens, the sky, does the same thing. You look at the heavens, you look at the sky, and by their beauty and the expanse of, of, of the heavens, you see that they are praising God. Day and night, God's creation, Genesis chapter 1. And what does day do? It speaks to the day. And night gives knowledge to the night, yet both work in perfect harmony. And as the psalmist says, there is no speech in day. There is no words to be found in night, no voice to be heard, yet their voice goes out into the entire world. Uh, The cycle of day and night, uh, the seasons, all of these things work together to reveal knowledge by their distinct speech. And the knowledge that day and night, the seasons, time reveals is God is at work. God is wise in His will and purpose in that He has laid out all of these things to work together. And another visible reminder, another word at work in the world is the sun. In the latter half of verse (coughs) 4, excuse me, in them He has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. So the sun being a, is a constant part of our world. Uh, I mean, uh, we would not be alive if it was not for the sun and its purpose, its, its plan, its trajectory, its circuit around the world and how it gives warmth and light and life. 
The psalmist didn't know about the solar systems, most likely, in his time. Yet he sees the sun and all he can see is the power and wisdom and glory of God. The sun is like a bridegroom. The bridegroom is filled with joy as she leaves from the bridal chambers. She, she's, she's beaming like the sun. The radiance of the sun is there. The sun is like a, a champion or a warrior. He rejoices as he sets out to run the race full of strength, full of power. The sun is full of power as it moves revolving around the world. Now we look at the sun and it rises with radiance and vigor and power and warms the earth, but it also is representative of God and His glory and His power and His wisdom. And like God, we don't have to listen uh, for the words of the sun because the effect of the sun is evident. Nothing is hidden from its heat. Nothing is hidden from the power of God. That's creation, the psalmist says. It reveals to us the Creator, His wisdom, His power, His glory. But what's even greater than God's creation is His Word, His law. Verses 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous together. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. The revelation of God's law is so much clearer than the revelation in nature. Nature declares God, proclaims Him. God is poured out through His creation. He is displayed. His omnipotence is displayed in nature. But the revelation of law, what is displayed is God's covenant with His humanity. What is displayed is God's will for His creation. We have a instruction given for God and it concerns everyone. Just as the, the warmth of the sun benefits all life on the world, well, the law is life-giving and enhancing to everyone. The heavens may not speak with words, but the law of the Lord speaks in many different ways. And while creation does not speak, yet his, as the psalmist says, the creation does have a voice that tells us God is real, the law allows God to speak to us directly. He speaks through his word. And what does God say through his word? He says he's going to revive those who would listen to his word. Verse 7, God's word has restorative, restorative qualities. Those who would adhere it would be restored. They would be healed with forgiveness. Their sins washed away. The, 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 God's word nourishes the faithful. God's word, second, is a source of wisdom for everyone who would receive it. The testimony of the Lord is sure or reliable, making wise the simple. In other words, anyone and everyone who would open up the word of God, his law, and would receive it, would be made wise by their receiving and listening to it. God's word brings about joy and peace. The precepts, the instructions, the guidelines bring about joy and peace. If you listen to God's word in this life, you will find joy and peace. You will find yourself on that narrow path where you are walking with the Lord. And while that road may have some challenges, some hills to converse or traverse, uh, God is with us. And we face those challenges, those hills, with a joyful attitude or a joyful nature and a peaceful attitude. God's commands are pure. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous together. They illuminate what is right and true before us. They speak to what is good and what is wrong. And we find that to have, uh, to have a fear of God, well, that's a good thing. It helps us to stay pure. It helps us to endure. It helps us to see the judgment of God as being true and righteous. That's what that last part of verse 9 is. The rules of the Lord. The rules uh, in, in the Hebrew is the judgment of God is, is true and righteous together. God's word is a reflection of his integrity, his uprightness, his completeness. God's word is trustworthy. 
His statute, his statutes are applicable to what we faced in life, and and to to follow them means we have this straightforward path that leads us to God. We don't find anything perverse or crooked in God's word. No, it's an encouragement for the godly to live an upright life. The word of God, with everything that it says about God and His creation and the transforming nature of His word. Uh, how, how valuable is that? More valuable than gold? More valuable, more sweeter than honey? That's what the psalmist says. God's word guides us, warns us, uh, fills us with joy, wisdom, and contentment. And so the psalmist, all he can, he can reflect upon himself and say, Who can discern my, his, who can discern my errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults, God. Keep back your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me, so that I should be blameless and innocent of, innocent of great transgression. So the psalmist kind of transitioned from reflecting on God through nature and His law to reflecting on himself. He sees God as perfect, as holy, as pure, as, um, as, as, uh, as powerful through nature and through the law. People are the opposite, though. I am sinful, Lord. I am an insignificant when I compare myself to the vastness of the heavens and the sky. And just as there is nothing hidden from the heat of the sun, and as the voice of nature penetrates throughout all the ends of the earth, God's Word, with its perfect nature, examines us and reveals our sinful nature. What can man do when he is under the eye of his Creator? Declare me innocent, Lord. Keep me from sin. Forgive me of my faults. All we can do is be humble. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge His nature, His law. And let God know that we have a desire to, 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 be, a, to be able to approach His throne. We don't want to sin against God. We want God to extend forgiveness to us and to provide the instruction that we need so that we can be complete, free from sin. And be able to stand pure and holy before our Creator. God has revealed Himself through His creation. Through the unspoken nature of the sun and the night and the day and the heavens and the sky. He has revealed His will and purpose through the covenant that He established through the law. And the psalmist, who, who, who because of he, what he knows about God, sees himself as a redeemed creation. And all he can do is pray Pray that God would accept his praise and adoration. Love, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Would you bow with me as we close? Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings that you give us with. Thank you for letting us know that you are real through your creation. Thank you, for know, thank you for letting us know that you desire to have a covenant with us through your law and that through your Son we can have the forgiveness of sins. We can be clothed in righteousness and we can have a relationship with you. Help us to work on our relationship every single day, Lord. To read uh, the Psalms, to read the Proverbs, to read the law, to read the Gospels, to read all of your word, Lord, and to embrace it all and to meditate on it and to wrestle with it and to have it be a, transform, a transforming power in our lives. Forgive us when we fail, Lord. Be with those that we care about. Guide us and direct us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope you have a, a great rest of the week. I hope this lesson has blessed you, has encouraged you in some way. Lord willing, we will be gathered together this coming Sunday, Mother's Day, for uh, a time of worship to celebrate mothers, to celebrate the blessing of mothers that God has given us but also to worship and glorify our God. Uh, we'd love to have you be with us. We'll be here at 9.30 for Bible classes and 10.30 for worship. And then we'll meet again at 5 o'clock for our evening Bible study as well. Have a great week, and may God bless you and your family with grace and with peace. I'll see you later.